For more now on the health care crisis in Los Angeles, we're joined tonight by Dr. Christina Galley, the director of the L.A. County Department of Health Services. L.A. is the largest county in the country and now accounts for more than half of the COVID deaths in the state of California. Dr. Galley, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Governor Newsom announced today that the highly contagious coronavirus variant first detected in the U.K. has now been found in Southern California. How concerned are you and does this change any of your response planning? This is certainly concerning, though I do believe it was really only a matter of time before the variant was found in Southern California. Uh, you know, it's a variant that is of concern because it spreads so easily and because it leads to such high transmission. So because of that, it's not surprising that it was found here. But there's nothing new that people need to do other than just continue to follow those same practices we've put in place that people have been expected to follow the whole time. It's just all the more reason to do so now, which is that importance of staying home, wearing the mask, and avoiding the intermingling with those outside of your household. And even before the aftermath of all of the holiday travel right now, we are seeing those overrun hospitals in L.A. that are out of ICU beds, facing oxygen shortages, and setting up treatment areas in tents, conference rooms, even in gift shops. How is this impacting the care that patients are getting, and what kind of rationing could we see potentially in the coming days and weeks? It's really, it's a tragic and heartbreaking situation on so many levels in so many facilities, and it's affecting hospitals across the board. There are 70 hospitals in Los Angeles County's, County with emergency departments, and virtually all of them are struggling with astronomically high numbers of cases of patients with COVID, and that reduces their ability to care for other patients with other conditions. As has been reported in the news, ambulances are stacking up outside of emergency departments, having long delays in offloading patients. There's been some bad outcomes with patients who can't be unloaded from ambulances in a timely manner. There's not an ability to move patients out of the emergency department upstairs into an ICU or a regular bed because there's just not sufficient numbers of those beds to have because of the overall shortage of staff. And that puts everybody's life at risk. And with the shortages of staff in those hospitals struggling, I know back back in April, we saw the USNS Mercy there outside of California for about six weeks helping um, with the pandemic at that time. Now with the shortages, the L.A. County supervisor is asking for more health care workers and for that U.S. Navy ship to return. Do you also think that that's necessary at this point? We'll take uh, additional healthcare staff and train providers and nurses and respiratory therapists from whatever source they can come from. Uh, if that's through uh, the help of the federal government, through disaster medical assistance teams or DOD teams, including the U.S. Mercy, uh, through registry and contract staff, whatever is the source of staff, uh, we don't have a preference as to one type or another. What we do need is help. And we've asked the state as well as the federal government to provide assistance with staffing our hospitals so that they can continue to doing that hard work of providing patient care in the midst of this surge. Let's talk real quick about the vaccine rollout, because that is something that you are facing right now as you're also dealing with these incredible surge of cases and hospitals and staff overwhelmed. How do you think the vaccine rollout is going at this point? We know that it's been slower than planned, but do you feel like enough advanced planning was was done? And do you feel that you're getting enough help from the federal government? The vaccine administration plan is led by our sister department, the Department of Public Health, but what I've seen in the hospitals, which is one of the two populations prioritized for distribution or first on, is that the distribution's gone very well. Within our hospital systems, our four directly operated hospitals, we've provided over 10,000 doses of vaccine to our frontline healthcare workers, and other hospitals across the region are also doing very well with the rollout. Uh, in parallel to that, with the Banderna vaccine, there's a prioritization right now going on for individuals who live and work in skilled nursing facilities and congregate care facilities. And the thing that we're worried about right now is just the, the consistent manner in which the supply of vaccine, particularly for the healthcare workers, it's the Pfizer vaccine, those numbers aren't coming in as had been initially anticipated. And that, again, puts our healthcare workers at risk. We need to have sufficient doses of those vaccines so that all of the frontline healthcare workers who put their lives at risk, who are interacting with patients on a daily basis, can have the vaccine if they're willing to receive it. And we're just not at that point yet. And amidst the surge in cases that we're seeing really across the country, we're also hearing about younger people, those in their 30s and 40s, of course, some in their 50s, getting very sick, even dying from COVID. Some countries are vaccinating this population before some of the elderly. What are your thoughts on that and how to best protect everyone? 
It's a complicated topic. Certainly most of the deaths that we've seen from COVID are in the individuals who are over age 65. Uh, but to your point, absolutely. This is a disease and a virus that can infect anyone and it can kill anyone. And it doesn't matter necessarily how old you are. It doesn't matter if you have underlying health conditions. We've seen perfectly healthy individuals who had no medical problems come into the hospital and pass away, tragically pass away at very young ages in their 30s and their 40s, as you said. Right now, the advice from the CDC, which the state of California and Los Angeles County is following, is that the prioritization for that vaccine among patient populations Populations should still be given prioritization to those over 65 and over age 75 rather than to the younger populations. And, and speaking of prioritizing vaccinations, the LA Unified School District, the second largest in the country, has been closed for in-person classes since March. But Governor Newsom announced today that he wants to reopen schools in February. That's not that long away. Is your department working on this as well? And do you think that teachers should be among some of the first to get vaccinated? Yes, teachers are among one of the priority groups in the rollout for the vaccination, and for good reason. They're frontline uh, essential workers, just the same as so many other essential workers across the county. I'm very excited about the governor's plan to push to reopen schools. That's what's best for education, especially some of the lower income and more vulnerable populations that have really struggled with distance learning. They're not thriving in that environment, and for the sake of their long-term development and education, I think it's imperative that we work to get kids back in school. It needs to be set, done safely. Safely, though, and I know that there's a variety of steps uh, that were announced by the state to help protect teachers, support teachers, provide testing uh, to the staff and teachers, as well as the kids, as well as to provide, to your point, vaccinations, as well as PPE to make sure everyone can stay safe in doing so. Dr. Galley, thank you so much for your work on the front lines and good luck to you. Thanks very much. Take care. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.